Corner. Today we have Joshua Smith on the show. He is a Houston native and the president of the Man Cave Society in Houston, Texas. So today we're going to be talking about biblical manhood plus fighting temptation. Y'all know the struggle is real for our brothers. So this is a really good opportunity for us to get a man's perspective and to truly understand like what does it even mean to walk out this biblical manhood life? Like what is it, you know? And what does it even look like? So today Joshua's gonna be sharing tips about this and sharing his own perspective as well how he has coped and how he has just gone through this with God on his side so we're about to hear about that in a little bit so Joshua what does it look like to live out this biblical manhood in our day and age right now I would say biblical manhood looks like walking in your purpose in Christ first knowing that you're complete in him and in him alone um, I would also say that it just looks like being obedient to God and not worrying about what the world has to say. A lot of times we often succumb to the pressures of the world, what society says, society standards, things about social media, peer pressure, and we often just kind of throw God to the side, except maybe on a Sunday when we go to church or a Wednesday when we go to Bible study. So honestly, it looks like just walking in obedience and walking in your purpose in God. Does any word application matter? Like, just does, does, does one need to be in the word to truly grasp a whole of what God is saying to them? Definitely. You can't really um, know as much about God as you could if you don't stay in your word because the word is God speaking to us. He's given us his word. A lot of times people pray to God or they, they ask things of God when the answer may already be in his word. And you kind of know God a little bit more, a little more intimate, a little bit deeper once you study his word because he's given plenty of instructions and direction to us already. And just studying his word allows us to know um, a lot about God and his plans for us. That's real. So did you have any struggles um, before coming to Christ or even as a Christian man, like, is, are there any things that you feel like, man, like, I have to walk this stuff out. I have to rely on God daily for him to help me through this. Like, I know there are things that many men struggle with that they don't feel like everyone does. So they just kind of like shy away and they don't really talk about it because everyone's good or everyone looks like they're doing a great job of being a Christian man. So what are some things that, you know, you felt felt like weren't really discussed as much as you wish they would have been and um, just things that you would really just want to encourage others on as well? I would say one thing that we um, overlook that's not really talked about especially in the church is lust it's something that Christian men deal with men who aren't in Christ deal with mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where it afflicts us silently because we don't speak out and a lot of times it becomes taboo even in the church we think that once we become saved lust is gone mm -hmm. when in fact it's really not there can be lust everywhere we're, we're afflicted by mm -hmm. it but we just don't really want to talk about it and even as a Christian man it's something we deal we deal with daily and it's a daily battle that's mm -hmm. why the word says you have to um, die to your flesh daily mm -hmm. because it's hard um, a lot of times people think once they accept Christ as their Lord and Savior that everything is just going to be fine when in fact that's not true so lust is something um, extremely extremely heavy and something that afflicts and attacks men inside of Christ outside the body of Christ just constantly yeah how have you found help in that through Christ I find help by knowing that it's something that it's all right to be afflicted by meaning that just because I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior that doesn't automatically exclude me from being tested from being tempted and knowing that it kind of affirmed that okay I'm not doing anything wrong mm -hmm. because at first I was like, you know, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm not doing something that would cause me to be afflicted, mm -hmm. to be tempted when God's word tells us that, you know, these things will still happen, mm -hmm. but we have the power to overcome with yeah. Christ Jesus. And mm -hmm. I would say, um, it's just extremely important going back to what you said to know your word. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, so in your battle to fight temptation in your, um, you know, struggle to just make sure that I will win, I will have victory over fighting temptation in our social media age. What are some things that you do that helps out with this fight? One of the biggest things that I do is I constantly pray, stay in my word, because my word encourages me. It's a dialogue when you pray to God. It's not like you just speaking up in the air. Mm -hmm. It's you speaking, God speaking back to you, and he speaks back through us also through his word. So mm -hmm. staying in my word, but also from a practical standpoint, having accountability. Accountability mm -hmm. is so important, and it's something men in um, the society that we live in kind of you know don't want any part of because mm -hmm. society tells us that if you're not a you know you're not a man if you don't do it by yourself and I've seen so many men struggle by themselves yeah. then be successful with the help of another man so accountability is extremely important and accountability means that you're honest with yourself first and foremost but then you're honest with the people around you because mm -hmm. they can't help you if they don't know what's going on with you. So True. being um, honest with yourself, knowing what your issues are and seeking help from somebody doesn't yeah. mean you're weaker. It doesn't mean you're less than a man. It means that, hey, 
I see there's something going on with me, something that I'm struggling with, mm -hmm. and I want to overcome it. Yeah, and I think even the Bible tells us, you know, that community is so important, you know. And if we're trying to be a lone wolf, we're going to do more harm than good because there's so much that you could have conquered by now had you just opened up to someone that you trusted or someone that you saw was like, you know, built up in their faith and said, hey, I need help. You know, it's okay to need help, you yeah. know? It's okay not to be okay sometimes spiritually and be like, hey, sis, hey, bro, like, I am struggling with this. Please help me out. And I think that once we become Christians, we have this facade that we just put up like everything is good. I am blessed and highly favored. I mean, which is true, but we're going to have some certain things that we need help with. And that's the beauty of community. That's the beauty of accountability. That's the beauty of being able to confide in a brother or a sister. So I think we shouldn't um, neglect that as Christians or as unbelievers as well that are trying to come to the faith and really believe in what God can do for them. I think that it's important that you get plugged in and stay plugged in and just see how God works and see how God moves through other people in your life as well. Definitely. I think one of the things we kind of do as Christians is we go through things and because, you know, maybe sinful or seen as bad in the church, we just don't talk about mm -hmm. it. But when we come to realize that once we talk about it, we find other people who are being afflicted by the same mm -hmm. thing. So it's like, hey, bro, I'm going to take this leap of faith. I'm going to trust you. I'm dealing with, you know, lust. I'm dealing mm -hmm. with pornography. I'm dealing with, you know, masturbation. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you realize two, three, four, five, six, exactly. seven guys, they're dealing with the same thing. And it's like, all it took was you to trust someone mm -hmm. with what you're going through and then you realize that what you're going through can be your testimony mm -hmm. and it can help other people because a lot of the things we go through are not for us mm -hmm. and so we can encourage someone else the bible talks about um not being tempted beyond what we can handle and mm -hmm. they're always being a way of escape but i think too many times people look at the temptation and they they succumb to it they say mm -hmm. oh it's too much there's nothing i could do about it and they honestly don't want help i've seen too many oh too many yeah men especially pride because, yeah mm -hmm. pride of a man is a, mm -hmm. is, a, is a very dangerous thing very and, dangerous um, thing society just adds to that you you're less than a man if you ask for help mm -hmm. you know if you reach out for for help you know people yeah. are going to think less of you and you know you're you're a sissy you're a wuss you're, all weak. Of, yeah, you're weak all those different things which is not true not like true if you all. read the word of god you'll you'll find out that what society the standards that they place on us is extremely contrary to what the word yes. of god says but because we're not reading our word and we're relying on you know social media people to feed us mm -hmm. the word of god which there's nothing wrong with that but you're only getting a snippet instead of the whole meal you're getting a little bite here a little bite there and then you run the risk of um seeing things and taking them out of perspective and out mm -hmm. of context because you don't know the word in its entirety for yourself and you don't truly study the word and allow the holy spirit to teach you and i think that's extremely yeah. important to stay in your word to stay prayer for and stay accountable and another thing that helped me that was a practical tip just to recognize what my stumbling blocks were my precursors were it wasn't for example you know when i was dealing with sexual sin as far as like pornography and masturbation it wasn't like oh let me just you know go home and, and watch porn it mm -hmm. was okay something that came on bet this mm -hmm. rap video or getting on worldstarhiphop.com mm -hmm. or seeing something on instagram you know those yeah. people where they're like for booking info email you know this mm -hmm. something it's just them in a bikini mm -hmm. or a swimsuit and those I realized were stumbling blocks for mm -hmm. me and if I truly wanted to get out of my sin I had to be practical and say hey I can't go to these websites mm -hmm. I can't go to these social media pages and not only can I go to them I need to find out you know why they're coming on my my search my yeah. explore page why are these things being feed funneled into me mm -hmm. so that I can kind of nip that in the butt because a yeah. lot of times we like to treat the symptoms but not the cause so mm -hmm. we're like picking the leaves and the fruit off the tree but we're not digging up the root yeah. so then when it keeps coming back keeps coming back we're so confused we're like i did this this and that mm -hmm. but we never got to the root cause so yeah. accountability knowing what your precursors are just being extremely extremely practical mm -hmm. in that and knowing that if this is something you truly want to overcome you have to do everything that you can yeah everything that you can yeah and that's very reasonable i think that because we don't hear a lot about the struggle or we don't talk about it enough it's almost like a lost cause yeah. you know it's like well, as christians we have so much power but when we when we refuse to you know admit our sins or confess our sins and be honest and bring it to light and also to like what are your stumbling blocks you know point out your stumbling blocks and be honest with yourself i can't go here because if i go here this will happen you know and that's power even realizing that is a form of power that's wisdom you know knowing that wow like i can't do this or i can't do that and that's okay you know because we're we're still flesh we're still here in the flesh so that's going to um still require some sort of fight 
until you know eventually we do end up and go to heaven by the grace of God um, so it's it's definitely one of those things that you just have to be you know continuously fighting I think there's a book called every man's fight have you heard of it I've heard of it yeah so I've heard that's a really good book for men um, if you're looking to just like learn more about lust and learn more about how to conquer this battle um, I'll leave it in the description bar below and you guys can check that out as well so thank you so much Josh for being on the show today I know that your words have encouraged a lot of men out there and maybe even a lot of women too because I feel like women struggle just as well as men do you know it could be masturbation it could be pornography it could be less like like it, it's it's, it's a two-sided coin you know so I know this video is going to really really pour into others and give them hope you know give them hope that man God can restore you and that you can live out biblical womanhood or biblical manhood in our day and age it's still very possible people are still doing it it's not tradi it's not traditional it's not old news people are literally still fighting so you're not alone and we're here we're praying for you and we're hoping and believing that um god will definitely be your strength as well and if you'd like to find josh on social media i'm going to link all of his information in my description bar below thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys next time on crystal's corner bye